what you have here is an extremely mean Pentium 4 setup consisting of two Urbandale Xeon CPUs running at 3.8 GHz, 8 GB of DDR2 memory running at 400 MHz, an RTX 3090 graphics card, and below that an Adaptic SATA RAID card, and for sound we've got a Creative X5 Extreme Gamer Fatality Pro. Today I'm going to be demonstrating Quake 2 RTX on a system which is essentially a dual Pentium 4 from the year 2005, fitted with new graphics hardware, in this case an RTX 3090. And what this does is it shows you the adaptability of PCs. Even though it's crazy to fit a card such as a 3090 to a Pentium 4 system such as this one, it actually runs incredibly well. Although the card isn't running close to its optimal performance, the system is smooth and runs amazingly, even though it's extremely bottlenecked. I have MSI Afterburner running in the background to give you additional GPU, CPU and memory information as the game runs. What's interesting to note here is the fact that the system is using pretty much all of the GPU. It's running in the high 90s. And another interesting thing to note is the fact that the game is using multiple cores. So although the system shows four CPUs, there are only two actual cores, the other two are hyperthreads. And the two actual cores are active throughout the game. And every now and again you get some activity on the hyperthreads. Another interesting thing to notice is the fact that very little system memory is actually being used. So, although the system is only equipped with 8GB of memory, which I do want to expand to 16GB, it's only making use of about 2.7GB of RAM as the game runs. As a proof of concept, I'm going to continue playing the game until I die. However, if you get bored of watching me play the game, then skip to the end where I'll cover the system specs.
I must admit that this machine has impressed me quite a bit. When I initially started this project, I wanted to have Quake 2 RTX running on a Pentium 4 system from the year 2005. And I initially thought that, yeah, it would run, but I never expected that it would run in a full screen mode, and let alone at 100 frames a second. I expected to maybe have to run it in a windowed mode with reduced settings in order to get it to run on the system. So overall, I'm pretty damn impressed with this result. So according to GPU-Z, the system is fitted with an RTX 3090 graphics card, and it's fitted into a system which CPU-Z shows to have two Irwindale CPUs running at 3.8 GHz, and just to show you that there are two cores. And the NVIDIA driver is set up to let the 3D application decide as to what settings to use. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching.